Hey, what's going on? Just got through with a workout. It's kind of funny. I didn't really think this workout was going to be that good because my back was sore. I mean, really, really sore because I changed up my workout. And I was walking like Fred Sanford. I mean, I was like freaking sore. But I came in with the proper mindset. I said to myself, we're going to work out to the best of our ability and we're going to push where we can push and we're going to pull back where we have to pull back. Sometimes you need to pull back because it's the thing to do. Well, the day um, went on uh, pretty much... I probably could have got a personal record if I had pushed for it, which just goes to show you the right mindset is exceptionally critical in any endeavor that you undertake and many people go into anything in many things many situations with the wrong mindset one of what if I fail so I have a question for you if you can do anything anything in the world money was an object time was an object age wasn't an issue gender wasn't an issue race wasn't none of that stuff applied what would you do with your life? What would you be doing with your life like right now? Seriously, what would you be doing? Now, I asked myself that question five years ago. I'm doing what I'm doing. You know, you know, I'm doing what I want to do. But frequently, people put obstacles, roadblocks, all of these things that you know I'm too short. Uh, I didn't go to the right college, I'm a woman, I'm black, I'm an immigrant. I'm, well, actually, immigrants typically don't bitch out like that. I, I will stand corrected. Typically, it's a different kind of person to leave the motherland and come to this foreign land and start all over. That's a different kind of person. So typically, they don't. But many people will come up with a play, a movie of defeat before they make the first step towards success and it's really funny because I'm posing that question and that question for some of you has created a state of paralysis that um, Glendon do not ask me what I would be doing with my life because I've never thought about that stuff I've never really contemplated that stuff and here you are pushing me out of my comfortable envelope of God doesn't want me to have that kind of life. God didn't send that man into my life. God did not send that woman into my life. God doesn't want me to have a business because I'm challenging that because I call bullshit on that. Now, as many of you know, I don't really believe in a lot of religions because I've seen my opinion that frequently they harm more than they help people. Just my opinion. And I've noticed something because I've got a client who is very religious and this is how this went down brought this person into the fold because they kept emailing and emailing and emailing me and I was like you know what I'm going to use the hustlers mindset on this person I'll tell you what made a bet with this person you're very religious you believe in God and you know and hit me up with well God finally opened up your heart and everything right didn't understand what was going on because I play chess on this. So we started, and then once I got inside of their mental space and saw what was really going on and put together a plan of action, this person saw more success in three months than they did in the previous three years. And then I challenged, it's like, was that God or was that you? And uh, he was just really kind of messed up he and his wife were having issues because he stopped, you know, saying God and everything. Because this is where I'm at. I think God gives you everything that you need to be successful. And your journey in life is to uncover, to enhance, and to build those attributes. Not sit on your ass and pray all the time, hoping and wishing for things to come through. And that's what many people do in my estimation. So I took this person who was all about... God this, God that, and now they say I, and they work their ass off. 
dude worked his ass off. Now this was the bet. You know, my normal rate's 450 per hour. I said, if this is successful, you pay me $900 per hour. And they went for it. And um, <laughs> I knew what was gonna happen because as I do this consulting business, as I talk to so many people, I can see what's coming to me. I've actually turned some people down because I couldn't help them. There are people I simply cannot help and I know it. And there's just no point in them even spending their money. Now, this is where the fight started because as we were going through the sessions, because this person has a business, uh, the business was doing okay. Now the business is booming and he could be a baller if he wants to. And this is where the problem with the uh, wife comes in. Now that he has more money coming in, she wants to quit her job. Going on those God principles of the man, you know, provides protects. And I told him, and this is where we're fighting. I said, don't let her quit her job. I said, this is what you do. You've got more money coming in. This is not the time for her to stand down. This is the time for her as a woman to stand up. And I gave him a plan. I said, this is what you do with that money. And this is the fight he has. Now, this is really, really pisses me the fuck off at how many religious folks, when you come up with a good plan, that's a good steward of money, that when they can't have their way, they start freaking out. So he's got some dissension going on in his house because he's making more money and you know he's doing the good steward thing and he goes to church and he's the head of the household and his wife is not listening to him this is common trust me on this this is common i talked to a lot of people so i told him stand firm stand firm stand firm and uh he started implementing this stuff and the money started to stack up i mean they save more money in a matter of weeks because his business now supports the household. Her money is to go into a savings account. She wants to be a, what I call an adult child, which is like spend her money how she wants to and he handles all the responsibilities. A real marriage, a real partnership does not fucking work like that. If you have a woman like that and you see it before you get the fuck rid of her, get rid of her because what you go to battle about over before you get married will become a war after you get married. So he's already in, he wants to keep her, and I was like, okay, stand firm, and you go to work, and you do what you need to do every freaking day. And then, it got really bad, he called me up, and I was like, this is what you do. You go to your wife, and you put this quest to her. What would you do with your life if I was not here? And he said, "What? ask her, what would she be doing with her life if you were not here? Then walk out the room and tell her to write it down and send it to you in the email. Make her use her mind. So he did it and you know, and he, he's like, she came after stairs, she wanted to tell me, she wanted to talk. And I said, remain firm in your manhood. Don't engage her, don't fight with her, walk away. You cannot fight emotion with logic. It does not happen. So, you know, he's like, you know, if you gotta get in your car and just like go around the corner, hang out with your boys, do that. And every time that she comes to you, with that, say, my dear wife, I asked you something that's very important about our marriage. I told him, you know, gave him line, chapter, and verse, and stand firm on that. This shit went on for four weeks. She finally did it, and she had a dream of being a ballerina. And he, uh, he told me that. I said, all right, well, okay. Tell her to go look at, you know, ballerina classes. They have them for adults. And tell her to take some. And tell her to take some time. And it's like she did that. And she found out that she didn't want to be a ballerina. It was just a whim. See, this is what happens when you deal with people who want to ride on your success. And I'm really going somewhere with this. Because many of you are going to be successful. And many of you are going to run into these problems. Because you are partnered with or have family members who don't understand the trek of success. I was talking to a good friend of mine this morning who's a millionaire, not in net worth, but in net earnings per year. Now, anyone that earns seven figures, that's strong as fuck. Net income, seven figures, strong. And he was just telling me about his family because he is 
the man on the white horse, or I should say the man on the green horse. And it's just like, all he worries about money. He works too hard, all of this stuff. And I'm just sitting there. It's like, you know, they don't know when you started this business 20 years ago, how sometimes you couldn't fucking pay rent or sometimes you're, he's like, yeah, they don't know that. And that's what happens when people see that you're doing well and they want a piece. We've developed this very entitlement mindset society of if you're doing well and there's people in your sphere of influence that they should get the benefits of that simply because they fucking know you. Now, I will say I have really great friends. I had many friends buy my first book and they had nothing to do with storage auction. They were never going to buy and they bought that to support me and I feel very privileged to have those kind of people in my life. Everyone doesn't have that kind of tribe. Many people have that tribe that, oh, big boy came up, we came up. We have got to get away from that because if everybody in the tribe is striving for success, which I'll come back to uh, my client and his wife, because I actually had to talk to her. I had to have a conversation with her and flesh out what she really wanted to do, which was be a wife. She didn't want to work. She never wanted to work. She worked because she had to. And she secretly resented her husband. And the minute that he got a phone call, I don't know where it is. I'll just say uh, she secretly resented her husband. And when he got to that point where she could live her dream and he wasn't with it because he was talking with me, then she became mad. So I sat them down and I said, okay, well, what's the deal? Because they're a young couple and they don't have any kids. And I was just like, well, what is this business of you staying at home when there's no kids for you to raise? Why? Well, she's like, that's what a good godly man does. He covers his wife. And she went on and on and on and on. And I let her go on. And I said, okay, what are your responsibilities as a wife? She got quiet. She got very, real, real quiet. And I said, this is common. You're so busy knowing what his role is that you have not invested in your role. I think you need to go to your church and find one of those women who's 50, 60, 70 years old and ask them, what is your role as a wife? And she's like, um, I've done that. I said, no, you haven't. Because I know how those women think. And they would tell you that if your man is doing what your man is doing, that you need to play your position. Go to any church any country and talk to the 50 to 60 70 year old women and if that man is doing what he needs to do they're going to tell you to play your position so that's how i know a lot of this stuff is um kind of entitlement based but you know we talked he talked and i said okay well you set a goal and then this is the this is the kicker this is the kicker she doesn't want to have children and he does he never knew that he never knew that It gets real in the G-verse. She wants to stay at home. She doesn't want to have children. And she wants him to essentially be her daddy. Not her husband, but her daddy. So we talked some more, and I gave her some G-love. Tough G-love. And uh, he's a good dude, and she admitted, that, you know, I give her credit. She admitted that a lot of the ways that she thought was wrong. And she's really said she had no good models in her family for this type of situation. So she's working on it. And, you know, she's she's talking to him. Whereas he is, you know, I talk to him and it's like, stay the course, focus on your business, keep building, keep being that dragon slayer. And, you know, talk to your wife. And at some point, you've got to make a decision. You know, once again, in the G-verse, I don't bullshit with people. Because I know when a dude wants to have kids, he wants to have kids. And if he's not going to have it with her, he's going to find someone who will have those kids for him. I, believe me on this. I hang out with men. I know, they let me in the men's club. You know, I know the secret handshake and everything. So this is a situation that is boiling. And this is one of the reasons that when I consult people, I ask them, what do you want to do with your life? Because many people build a business and then try to build a life. You should build your life. You should know what you want to do. You should have your dreams and stuff. Because this guy, right, you know, his business model is sweet. Now that, you know, I've kind of tuned it up, put some new spark plugs on it, put a new header on it, bored out that uh, engine a little bit, you know, now just a few, I really only had to do 10 things for him, for him to really start stroking it in. Because he did all the hard work of building the business, getting the products and customer base, but he his methodology just sucked monkey ass. So 
we're there with him. And this is why I ask you, what do you want to do if money, gen, if none of that stuff ever was an issue, what do you want to do? And the second part of that is for you to start today doing that. Because there are many people, just like this man's wife, who have this dream, this whim, this thing they want to do, but they never actually explored it. And when they explore it, so many times they find out it ain't what they want to do. It's not really what makes their heart go pitter patter, pitter patter. Because we tend to romanticize dreams. It's like my dream. And this is really uh, predominant with writers. It's like that book. I got this book inside me. I never went with that. I got this book inside me. My whole thing was I have these books inside of me. Which means when one book doesn't hit, I'm not destroyed because I know there's another book and another book and another book. I actually had, my dream was challenged. I was married, uh, no support there. I tried again, no support there. Only on the third time after I spent many years in the storage auction business and really learned how to hustle did my dream of becoming a published author happen. It took me three tries. So if you're saying, there's this thing that you want to do and the first time you try to do it and then you bitch the fuck out it really wasn't that important to you because what action is the greatest truth there is action if it is your dream if it's your intention if this is something you really really want to do you're going to do it become hell high water family famine locust uh serpent swimming around in your house you like fuck those servants i'm gonna do this shit so I ask, to you, I ask you this, what do you want to do with your life? How important is that happiness that comes from doing what you want to do with your life? I mean, are you really, really going to put out? Are you really, really going to put it to the mat? Because you're never going to know what you like or what you don't like for real, for real, as a friend of mine loves to say, for real, for real, until you actually try to do it. Until you actually try to do it. And until then, you don't know. This guy was married to a woman who he talked to and actually said, we want to have kids. Been married four years, no kids, because she doesn't want to have kids, which is another thing. If a woman don't want to have kids, she ain't having any. Please believe that. If she doesn't want to have kids, she ain't having it. <laughs> it ain't happening. It's just not happening. So understand, really explore your life. And another, word, another direction that I'm going with this, If you are planning on pairing up with someone, once you determine your life path, you need to ask them a few questions about their life path, where they want to be, the things they want to do, the type of life that they want to have. Because if you don't, you can end up like my client, married to someone who, as the Japanese say, you're sleeping in the same bed, but you're dreaming different dreams. She's dreaming one thing, he's dreaming another. Understand, that's a very ugly position to be in. And, you know, if you really, really put this down, you can have that life that you want and create that energy that draws those type of people into your life. You will draw the right man or woman into your life when you become the person that needs, that has that energy that draws that person to you. If you don't have the person or people or whatever in your life, there's some in you that's repelling that shit. And people hate it when I say it because it's like it's society, I got fucked, no, no, no. There's some in you that's drawing that shit to you. So just some food for thought, just some for you to think about. All right, and this is Glendon and I'll see you on the good side.